In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to do screen printing with drawing fluid. Start by lining up your source image, which could be a photograph or a drawing. You want to place this under the screen and make sure that the fabric part of the screen is facing up. Then you're going to paint your design using drawing fluid. When you open up your drawing flu fluid, please stir it to make sure that it's completely consistent. Then go ahead and paint it on with a paintbrush. It's really important that when you start painting on your drawing fluid, you do not move. Because the silk is raised from the surface of your image, you're going to find that there's a slight offset look to what you're doing. That you won't be seeming to trace exactly, as you can see as I'm doing. But it will be consistent as long as you don't move. So plant your feet and stay in the same position to make sure that as you paint, your point of view doesn't change and your drawing will be even across the surface of your screen. As I'm painting, I'm being very careful to make sure that it is as uh, consistent across the silk as possible to make sure I'm getting the same level of dark green so that I know that I've applied the drawing fluid on thickly and it will actually cover the screen the way I need it to. You can see here that I've moved my source image slightly because I want to now focus on the writing, which is printed on the same page. But even though I moved the image, I myself don't move. So you can see here, I'm standing very still as I'm painting. I'm just moving my arm to the drawing fluid and back to the screen. So it's really important to ensure that your screen comes out correctly. After you think you paint on your whole design, I suggest that you remove your source image from underneath and then focus on going in and capturing the details and making sure that you've applied the drawing fluid thickly across the entire painting. When you finish with drawing fluid, you're going to need to let your screen dry before the next step as we prepare our screen to be printed on. The drying time is going to vary. Your next step is to apply the screen filler. Make sure that as you stir your screen filler, you try to stir from the bottom to make sure that all the particulates mix evenly across it. You want to make sure that you stir and you do not shake this because you do not want to have any air bubbles in your um, fluid at all. So I'm going to make sure that I stir it very thoroughly until I get a nice even consistency across the entire job. With the screen filler, you want to pour it across the top. Make sure that you are pouring um, fair amount because you need to be able to do this step in one go. You cannot go back and forth. So don't worry about pouring a little too much. You can always scrape it back into the jar if you pour too much. You're next going to grab your squeegee. You're going to press it against the screen and you're going to pull it towards yourself. Try to keep your squeegee at a 45 degree angle. This will help ensure that you can move the um, fluid right across the entirety of the screen and that the screen filler fills in every part of the fabric. Now my screen is completely covered. I'm going to put any extra screen filler back in the jar so they can be used with a different project. You're going to let it dry for 24 hours, but after it dries, you need to clean off the drawing fluid, which is water soluble. So here I've put it in the sink and I'm using the spray head to clean out all of the green drawing fluid. I'm also using a toothbrush. I want to be sure that as I'm cleaning it out, I get all of the green off, but I also want to make sure that my red edges of screen filler are smooth and consistent. Once you've completely dried it, you're going to put it on the drying rack and let it dry 
again for about 24 hours because you have to let the fabric and the wood dry. Now we get to start pulling ink across our screen and making our actual screen prints now that our screen is created. Take the time to clamp your screen down to the table with the paper underneath and this is the first time that you're going to place the screen fabric side down. Once it's all in place, go ahead and take your, your ink, in this case I'm using a red ink. It has roughly the consistency of acrylic paint, but please just use the correct screen printing ink and not acrylic paint because of how it reacts with being pushed through the fabric of the screen. Once I've placed it along the top edge, I'm going to get my squeegee again. And I want to run it firmly and again at a 45 degree angle across the screen. You can see I'm using two hands because the clamps are holding, helping holding it in place. If you don't have clamps, please ask your friend to hold it for you. As I pull the screen, you can see that the ink fills all the spaces where the drawing fluid used to be. I'm going to use a small squeegee just to clean up the edges because my design is a little bit too large for the squeegee I'd originally picked. Then you can undo the clamps and remove your screen to see your print underneath. The great thing with screen printing is you can do it as many times as you want. When you want to switch colors, I encourage you to clean your screen in between and let them dry. But at this point, I can do as many of these red prints as I'd like. Screen printing is great because depending on the type of ink you use, you can do this on either paper or fabric. It works in either situation because there's a textile based ink as well. But you can see here that I'm careful to line my paper, apply the clamps to ensure that it's mounted solidly and it doesn't shift. It needs to be nice and firm so that it doesn't get blurry. And then once again, I apply my ink along the top edge. I take my squeegee, 45 degree angle, and pull it firmly across the entire screen. 